I think Iran is uh, very different. They put their uh, uh, zealotry above their survival. They have suicide bombers uh, all over the place. I wouldn't rely on their rationality. You know, you, you, since the advent of nuclear weapons, uh, you've had countries that had access to nuclear weapons who always made a careful calculation of cost and benefit. But Iran is guided by a, a, a leadership with uh, an unbelievable fanaticism. It's the same fanaticism that you see storming your embassies today. You want these fanatics to have nuclear weapons? I mean, I heard some people suggest, David, I actually read this in the American press, they said, well, you know, if you take action, that's, that's a lot worse than having uh, Iran with nuclear weapons. Some have even said that Iran with nuclear weapons would stabilize uh, the Middle East, stabilize the Middle East. I, I think the people who say this have set a new standard for human stupidity. I think the issue is how to prevent Iran from uh, completing its uh, nuclear weapons program. They're moving very rapidly to completing uh, the enrichment of the uranium that they need to produce a nuclear bomb. In six months or so, they'll be 90% of the way there. I think it's important to place a red line before Iran, and I think that actually reduces the chance of uh, military conflict, because if they know there's a point, a stage in the enrichment or other nuclear activities, that they cannot cross because they'll face consequences, I think they'll actually not cross. I think that it. when oh, he yeah. says that, implicit in that is that he'll stop them before they get to a nuclear weapon, which means he, he'll draw a red line somewhere. I think it's important to communicate it to them. I wouldn't bet, uh, I wouldn't bet the security of the world and my own country's future uh, with, uh, uh, from a country that threatens our annihilation, uh, murders uh, civilians en masse in, uh, in Syria, and, does terror, brutalizes its own people. I wouldn't uh, uh, bet the future on, uh, on intelligence. Uh, you know, you just marked 9-11. Uh, uh, that wasn't seen. None of us, uh, neither Israel or the United States, saw Iran building this massive nuclear bunker under a mountain. For two years, they proceeded without our knowledge. So. I, I think the one thing we do know is what they're doing right now. We know that they're enriching this material. We know that in six, seven months they'll have uh, they'll have got to uh, cover 90% of the way from atomic bomb material. Uh, and I think that uh, we should count on the things that we do know in setting the, the red line. You, you think so, Candy? That's like, you, yeah, well, let, let, me, let me interrupt. It's not legitimate. Uh, this is a country that uh, talks about, uh, denies the Holocaust, promises to wipe out Israel, is engaged in terror throughout the world. It's like Timothy McVeigh uh, walking into a, uh, you know, into a shop in Oklahoma City and saying, I'd like to tend my garden. Uh, I'd like to buy some fertilizer. How much do you want? Oh, I don't know, 20,000 pounds. Uh, come on, we know that they're working towards a, a, a weapon, they're not, uh, uh, we know that. It's not something that we surmise. Uh, we have absolutely certainty about uh, that, and they're advancing towards that uh, nuclear program. Do you mean... Well, I talked about the certainty of their enrichment program. I didn't talk about the other elements, and I spoke about the difficulty of knowing other things. Uh, but we have no difficulty, as the IAEA uh, report just tells us, uh, about what they're doing and uh, in their enrichment program. That we know for sure. Uh, and that's the only thing we know uh, for sure that is verifiable uh, and accessible. We know that. Uh, as far as uh, uh, the U.S. and Israel, obviously we have different capability. You're a big country. You're uh, several thousand miles away. You have uh, stronger military capabilities. Uh, we're a smaller country. We're more vulnerable. They threaten our very annihilation. Uh, so obviously we have uh, different capabilities and different clocks, but in terms of what is happening is as Iran is getting closer and closer to completing its uh, work for its first atomic uh, bomb, uh, the differences between us are uh, uh, and our capabilities are becoming less and less important because uh, Iran is uh, fast approaching uh, a, a point where uh, it could uh, disappear from our capability of uh, stopping them. Our capability means yes. not only Israel. But I, I, but I think that, I, I think this is a matter of urgency and people people should understand that. That's what's guiding it. Uh, 
What's guiding me, uh, contrary to what I've read in, in the United States, is not the American political calendar, it's the Iranian nuclear calendar. And the Iranian centrifuges uh, that are charging ahead simply do not take time out for the American elections. I wish, I wish the Iranians would shut down the centrifuges, and then we won't have to talk about it. But they don't, and in fact, they do the very opposite. That's what's driving the urgency of this. And again, uh, we have close consultations with the United States on this issue. I was pretty certain and continue to be pretty, pretty certain that uh, there are going to be bumps in the road because uh, you know, in a lot of these places uh, the one organizing principle uh, has been Islam, uh, the one part of society that hasn't been controlled completely by the government. There I think we should have a red line communicated to the world. That's what I would say. Uh, and I, I think it's, it's vital. I know that uh, people value uh, flexibility. I think that's important. But I think at this late stage of the game, uh, I think Iran needs to see clarity. Uh, I'm not sure I would have said this three years ago, two years ago, one year ago. But as we get closer and closer and closer to the end game, uh, I think we have to establish that. That's, uh, that's becoming important. Because you have to just think about it. You, know, you see the Middle East, you see these fanatics. Uh, storming your embassies, and, and I want to send my condolences to the American people for the loss of the, that extraordinary ambassador and his extraordinary colleagues. Uh, we sympathize, as no other people does, with the United States. Uh, and yet, uh, you know that as we face the possibility that a regime that is uh, guided by the same fanaticism would have nuclear weapons, it's become something very urgent for all of us to make sure that they don't get there. And if you want to make sure that they don't get there, uh, make sure that they know that there is a line they shouldn't cross. Because otherwise, they'll cross it and they'll get there. There's also people. What we do know is that uh, the natural uh, protests that uh, arose because of the outrage over the video. Uh, were used as an excuse by extremists uh, to see if they can also directly harm U.S. interests. Okay. Uh, we value, we cherish the bipartisan support uh, for Israel in the United States, and we're supported by Democrats and Republicans alike. You know, this is not that there is a common interest of all Americans, of all. Uh, political persuasions to stop Iran. This is a regime that is uh, giving vent to the worst impulses that you see right now in the Middle East. They, uh, they deny the rights of women, deny democracy, brutalize their own people, uh, don't give freedom of religion. Uh, all the things that you see now uh, in, in these mobs storming the American embassy is what you'll see with a regime that would have atomic bombs. You can't have such people have atomic bombs. And I believe that's uh, as uh, in, important for uh, Republicans, uh, as it is for Democrats, important for Democrats as it is for Republicans, as important for uh, for uh, uh, President Obama as it is for uh, uh, for Mitt Romney. It's important for the future of our world. The fact is that every day that passes, Iran gets closer and closer to nuclear bombs. The world tells Israel, wait. There's still time. And I say, wait for what? Wait until when?